Well, joining us right now is Professor Adebayo Otitoloju, Managing Director, Unilag Consult, and Professor of Environmental Toxicology. is one of the contributors to a study, the preliminary evaluation of COVID-19, the differences and incidences on the continent, and he joins us now. I would like to welcome you to the program on this very special day, uh, celebrating our children um, in the middle of a pandemic. Let's begin by asking you what you think the COVID-19 has, uh, the kind of blow it has dealt on the Nigerian child? Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's, a, it's a difficult one for the Nigerian child at this stage because children are told I'm just told we have Professor Adebayo Otitoloju back again. Uh, we do apologize, but we hope you, you can hear me and that we have better audio. You were talking about the impact to the Nigerian child. Yes, uh, I can hear you very well. I said, uh, with regards to the Nigerian child, it's been a very unsettling time. The children are not in school. They cannot visit their friends. Families cannot visit families. And this is a huge problem. Therefore, it's very unsettling. But, I mean, things are changing gradually. There is the tendency that things are easing out gradually, and very soon, I'm sure they will be able to go back to school and start learning again. We thank uh, God for those opportunities of the other schools that have been able to move uh, lessons onto virtual platforms, and that has really helped. But this is still not enough because a large chunk of Nigerian children are not really getting any form of learning at this stage. It's unfortunate, but things will get better. There is a, a lot of hope and optimism coming from there because a lot of people have talked about the impact to the vulnerable group. If you look at the uh, children living with disability, also some of the Amadjiri children as well, and, and the girl child, you know, at such a critical stage as this, do you expect that government are looking into um, work, workable ways uh, to get the children busy at this stage. And this is all the, you know, the Nigerian child. Well, at this stage, the work of the government is really cut out for them. Any government official now, particularly in the educational sector, we know there's a lot to be done. You know, particularly when you pick on the different vulnerable groups, if you pick on the uh, Amadjuris, and with the way different state governments are sending them from one state to the other, as if they are no longer citizens of the country, it's unfortunate. We have to stay together, and we have to all grapple with this and solve the problem. We are one now. Humanity must be at play now. We cannot just say, this is not my own problem, this is your own problem. This is not the state to do that now. We should stay together, make sure that the health and the education of the children is a focal point at this stage. Professor, let's go to the preliminary evaluation of COVID-19, uh, the study uh, which you earlier sent to me. Um, what were some of the outcomes, uh, the findings on the differences in the spread of COVID-19 infections on the continent, Africa? Okay, uh, what we've done with that study is, is that as countries are about to start easing out the lockdown issues, we felt it is important for us to come together and do an evaluation, particularly to identify what are the um, practices that can be shared among African countries. Good enough, our results have shown, I mean, the outcome of the study is quite clear. Somehow, somewhere, it seems Africa has been spared of this impact, the major impact from COVID-19. The level of uh, confirmed cases the number of deaths and the number of recoveries in Africa, it, it's, I mean, when you compare that to other continents, it shows that in the way we've been spared. And we know it is not because we have better health infrastructure. We know it is not because the, the, the performance of our uh, health people are better, but somehow along the line, things have been better across Africa. So we felt it is night time for us to share that. From the result, what we have seen is that the Northern African countries have been more impacted compared to other parts of Africa. After the Northern Africa, particularly you take Egypt, you take Algeria, you take Morocco, 
And then South Africa, I mean, in terms of the Northern Africa, except South Africa, Egypt, Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia, they've been impacted more. South Africa as a country has also been impacted a little bit more. And West Africa, particularly Nigeria, Ghana also, we've had our own level of impact. Uh, and that is quite uh, uh, the, the situation in Africa. In terms of recovery, we found out that a number of countries in Africa have done a lot better than the others, particularly countries like Mauritius, Mauritania, Madagascar, Togo. Some of these countries have done a lot better, even Gambia and Senegal, because a lot of the people who tested uh, positive, they've actually recovered. And these countries also recorded lower number of deaths. You know, I mean, for Nigeria, we, we seem to be doing not too good in Africa, actually. We seem to be in the lower bottom of the, of the rack. So we, there is a lot for us to learn from these countries that have done a lot better than us. Because we have realized it is only by learning from ourselves that we will know what to do in this case. And the world we may also eventually have to even learn from Africa, from some of the results that we are seeing now. Uh, if you can, in just about 30 seconds, I um, know you mentioned some of the countries, Togo, Madagascar, uh, Burkina Faso, doing better. Uh, also in your study, uh, it showed that they sort of utilized traditional methods uh, to fight COVID-19. Do you think that also helped them? Actually, it's a combination of so many things. One thing that stood out, is the informal sector within the, within the prescription method for drugs. It seems Africans are just going around and treating themselves, whether with orthodox medicine or, uh, or herbs or any other form of medicine. And it seems almost all Africans have become pseudo-doctors one way or the other. It seems we are all telling ourselves, you have to use ginger, we have to use uh, some other lemon or the rest of it take out tea and dress and that has been going on and when people are a little bit sick they just go on and use some form of medicine they are treating symptoms this is what we see to be happening across africa and that may be responsible for the low number of deaths and the high level of recoveries that we have found all right we appreciate your time i guess uh, africans are just really trying to stay alive we appreciate your time professor adebayo otitology managing director unilac consort professor of environmental toxicology thank you for joining us thank you